Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to work out the example a little bit more. We're going to start out with the state matrix equation where we're going to update it for velocity and update it for acceleration. This is the example. The second one of the examples where we're dealing with a falling object. Let's assume that the initial conditions are that it starts at a height of 20 meters. Its initial velocity in the y direction is zero. The acceleration due to gravity is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. In the delta t interval, let's assume it's one second. First, we need to multiply the A matrix times the previous, what we call state matrix, and we have to multiply the B matrix times the, what we call the control variable matrix. Here's what that looks like in a one-dimensional problem where we have motion, a position, and velocity in, let's say, the y direction. This is what the A, A matrix looks like, and if we're dealing with something that could have acceleration in one dimension, that's what the B matrix looks like, just like we saw in the previous example. The U matrix, the control variable matrix, in this case a falling object, is affected by the force of, of uh, gravity, and therefore it experiences an acceleration in the negative Y direction. We have acceleration equal to G. Working out this matrix, we get the following x sub k, which is the new state, the current state, based upon the previous state, is equal to, multiply this times this, plus this times this, we get a 2 by 1 matrix that gives us the previous position, y of k minus 1, plus the delta t times the previous velocity, the delta t times the previous velocity, which is y dot of k minus 1. And here we get 0 times this, and 1 times this, y dot k minus 1. We're going to add to that this multiplication, which is equal to 1 half delta t squared times g. Remember, g is a minus 9.8. And then here we get delta t times g. So you can see that the position is affected by the, by the acceleration due to gravity, and the velocity will also change due to the acceleration due to gravity. We're going to call the noise factor here, the noise in the process, we're going to call that zero for now to make things a little bit easier. Adding these together, now we have the new matrix, the new state matrix, equal to the previous position in the y direction, plus the change caused by the velocity, delta t times the velocity in the y direction that was there previously, plus one half times delta t squared times g. So the position will also be affected by the acceleration. And then the velocity, zero, that was the initial velocity at time equals zero, plus the velocity at the previous moment, a second ago. We add to that the change in velocity due to the acceleration plus delta t times g. Remember again that g is a negative 9.8. Now let's plug in some numbers to see what this actually looks like. We should be able to find the new position and the new velocity of the state of the object that we're tracking, in this case, a falling object. x sub k is equal to, that means now one second later, because delta t is equal to one second, so one second later, what is the new position and the new velocity of the falling object? We have the previous position, which is equal to... 20, it started at a height of 20. We add to that the amount of time that, is, that has elapsed, one second, times the velocity on the previous state, which is zero, plus one half times the delta t squared, delta t is one, one squared, times the acceleration to gravity, minus 9.8. This added together will give us the new position one second later. Here, on the second row, we get 0 plus the velocity in the y direction in the previous instant, the second ago, which is 0, plus delta t times g. Now, delta t is 1 second, and g is minus 9.8. This will give us the new velocity one second later. This then becomes 20 minus 4.9, 15.1, that's the new position, and 
minus 9.8 is the new velocity. Remember that the state matrix represents position and velocity. Let me write it up here because I don't think I did that. The position matrix, or I should say the state matrix, was equal to y and y dot represents the position and the velocity in the y direction. So the top row is the position, the new position one second later, and the bottom row is the new velocity one second later. That is why we use matrices, because matrices does exactly the same thing as what we would get from working out equations of kinematics, but with computers, it's a lot easier to calculate that using matrices rather than using equations. That's why we do this. Now, this is a simple example in one dimension. You now know how to update the state matrix of an object that's moving and accelerating in a single dimension. We'll show you some examples of how to do that with two dimensions and how to do that with three dimensions. Before we do that, though, we want to do one more thing. We want to show you how to update the measurement. We're going to make a measurement, and we want to be able to update the new position relative to the measurement. This is the new position as predicted by the theoretical equations. But we should also be able to update the state matrix by adding to that the change caused by a measurement. We take a new measurement and how does that work? So we'll show you that on the next example and then we'll put it all together and show you some examples in two and three dimensions.